everyone we are about to start our nav life session this evening we'll be dealing with lasting relationships um we have two of our presenters this evening with us um brother alan casey as well as brother smith um but before we get into that we'd just like to send a hearty welcome to everyone who is online with us from near and far um, we see a lot of familiar names um, quite a few from Jamaica, in the Caribbean and outside. We thank you so much for taking the time and we hope and pray that you would have been blessed um, and even been the better for it for being a part of our session this evening. So before we start, we will ask our evangelist brother Grinnell to say a word of prayer as we are about to begin our session. <laughs> Let's bow as we go to God in prayer. Eternal God and our Father, the God of creation, the God who created relationship by first creating Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And Father God, you want us to exist in healthy, strong, an wholesome relationship. And Lord, as we come before you, asking you your blessings on the discussion this evening, we ask for a special endowment on our facilitators. May you use them in a special way. May this evening's workshop be of such that we all will be enlightened encouraged, empowered, and uplifted from being a part of this. Bless the event, and may we all leave this evening feeling better off from having participated. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Grinnell. Um, so before our presenters come forward, we just have some housekeeping matters as it relates to the um, recording for tonight's session. Um, everything is will be recorded and available. Um, if you'd like to be sent a copy of the recording, we ask you to forward your request to info at St. Andrew Church of Christ dot org or, or um, you can send your email address to the admin the admin co admin co-host that's at the top of your participants list additionally um we'd like to just ask our attendees that um you keep your microphone as well as your videos off for the duration of the presentation um at the end of the presentation the general format is that we'll take questions at the end so at the start we will have our um, presenters and then we will have our the questions at the end which you can either voice via um, your microphones or um, chat in, put in the chat but in the interim we're asking you please to keep your microphones and also your videos off during the presentation um, so without further ado I invite um, Brother Trevor Smith and Mr. Brother Alan Casey to um, begin tonight's presentation. Okay, um, my name is Andre Alan Casey. I hope you'll be able. To, yeah, you can all see me. Um, uh, I don't know if Brother Smith want to show his face too, <laughs> or Mike in. Um, um, as far as my good evening, I'm. Um, riding shotgun tonight. So, <laughs> Brother Andre, go ahead. Okay. And um, um, for those who 
are new to 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 um, to me. Um, I, as far as my profession is concerned, I'm a counseling psychologist, and um, but as far as my living is concerned, I'm a Christian. <laughs> um, this series is brought to you by St. Andrew Church of Christ, and we're our evangelist, Brother Alfonso Grinnell, um, um, serves um, and lead our congregation. And um, so we are very elated, actually, um, for, to, to be given this privilege to present uh, matters of this nature um, through the, the, the St. Andrew Church of Christ, in which um, I'm also a member. Uh, along with Brother Smith. Okay, Brother Smith is a, um, um, uh, an amazing writer for the Gleaner, contributor. Um, and uh, um, I invite you all to, to look into your Sunday um, paper and you will see the awesome um, um, things that, that, that he shares with us. So he's also a, a life coach, certified life coach. Um, now, I would like to, to start, I know the theme um, spoke volume of the fact that um, about lasting relationships and it does involve be it married and unmarried people. We want to start though with the unmarried um, and then we will get into the married. Uh, but um, as far as uh, uh, the unmarried is concerned, we would just like to remind folks that um, Sometimes we get carried away in, in, in sharing so many information about what married people must do to not only make their choice, but to back that choice. But we're also saying to the unmarried, to the singles, that listen, um, be prepared to make the best choice. But, and so we'd like to offer some tools that we hope um, you know, can help you in, in making the appropriate choice as far as finding a mate is concerned. Um, the, um, for us, you know, we are Christians and by no stretch of the imagination, um, we are not just about saying finding a mate. We're talking about finding a mate with intent to, to get married. So please bear in mind that um, um, what is our objective? We are, we are not only saying to find a mate, no. We're saying finding a mate with the intent to get married. And that's why my subject that I will be discussing today is called Before I Say I Do, um, backslash dating, but before I say I do. So let us get started. Before, there are some things that we need to be mindful of before we get involved with anyone. Um, and as you will see in your introduction right there, before you get involved, uh, before you get involved and make a commitment to someone, we are saying, folks, do not let lust. And I'm going to break down each of these words or give a, a possible working definition of this. Now, let me go ahead and, and say this. The possibility exists that we may not finish this today. The possibility exists. Um, but don't let lust. And what I mean by lust, I'm talking about the, the pretty looks, but, but, but have bad character. <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, the scooty wow wow. I'm talking about, you know, when you see this person, you feel like, no man, um, this person must be my partner for the rest of my life. But after you spend maybe a month with the person, then you realize more than, more than idiosyncrasies, but, but a number of different things that is interfering with the kind of commitment that you'd like to, um, or that will interfere with the commitment that you made initially when you saw this person. And so we are saying pretty looks but bad character is not a good ingredient um, for you to say, I am going to um, um, spend a, uh, uh, any kind of meaningful relationship with this person. So I'm saying that, that is lost. Also, desperation. So before you get involved with somebody, please be mindful that we can't allow desperation to, to, to influence our decision. Um, some folks' desperation might be measured in different ways. Uh, and I'm getting too old, um, you know, um, is one 
um, way that some folks are used for desperation. Desperation could be so many folks around you um, have somebody, but you don't have anybody. Um, you know, I'm just those, those two things that jump out at my head. And I'm certain there are a number of different examples we can draw on as far as desperation is concerned. Immaturity, um, I cannot wait. Uh, according to how I feel, <laughs> I must um, um, take on this person to be my lifelong partner. And, and so um, nobody can tell me nothing basic or two. Um, is a part of that immaturity. Um, or nobody cannot tell me how I'm feeling for that matter. But, but immaturity, um, or sometimes we might even say, but you got married when you were this age, or you got married when you were this age. And sometimes even as adults, um, you know, we, because, we were, because we got married at an early age, we kind of say, well, okay, then I'm going to give, give this person an opportunity or a better opportunity than, than, than the one I had. And, uh, and of such, do not safeguard them in recognizing that it was a different time when you got married. And so immaturity, a matter of fact, it is said that a person, a person's head, um, mind rather, or brain is not fully developed um, until age 25. And so we say, um, before that, most persons will be using um, uh, the, 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 the amygdala, aspect of the brain, um, the emotional part of the brain to drive their decision rather than the prefrontal cortex of the brain that speaks to consequences in relation to your decisions. And so in maturity, um, folks, a lot of folks get married way too early and they have lost out in certain aspect of their own maturity. And once they reach a certain age, then for them, they are like, hey, what am I doing with this person? Um, we don't share the same goals and dreams and aspiration. A part of that immaturity also can, can be measured in terms of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, generation gap, right? A generation gap is 10 years or more. And so sometimes we are getting married to someone or we want to feel like this person can be, must be our partner. But in truth and in fact, um, there's a generation gap. Um, for some relationships it work, yes. For other relationships, um, no. <laughs> for other relationships, no. It, it, um, your own maturity is at stake and of such. There are several more things that you need to grow into um, so as to decide and to make sure that you are making um, the best decision and the best choice. Uh, ignorance is another thing that sometimes we are allowed to interfere with that decision process. Um, you know, Percy Sledge, I think, was the one who said, who wrote the song, Take Time to Know Her. It's not an overnight thing. And so, um, or to know him for that matter, it's not an overnight thing. And so we're saying here, the more information you have about your prospective partner, um, the better informed you are about the, the kind of relationship you will have going forward. Also pressure from others. Um, I've seen where parents, um, parents say to their children too that, listen, um, you, you can make me grow old and, and, and don't have a grandchild uh, or grandchildren, or you know, will turn me into our grandchildren. And, um, and so sometimes we, you know, we take on certain responsibilities because uh, even our own parents pressure us into, into becoming parents sometimes too soon. Or, or, you know, um, or to engage ourselves in a relationship that really and truly we needed more information before so doing. Um, here's a big one, low self-esteem. And this is where many times you might settle for just about anyone who gives you any kind of attention um, because of low self-esteem. And so we're saying here again that be mindful, be careful, um, be conscientious, <laughs> of your decision-making process before you decide to get involved with just anyone. Um, and be certain that you are not blinded by the warning signs. We're saying here, keep your eyes open. Don't fool yourself that you can change someone or that what you see as false aren't really that important. Um, why so? Because once you decide to commit to someone over time, their flaws, 
their vulnerabilities, their pet peeves, and even their differences will become more obvious. So that is um, before, before you get involved um, with someone. Um, how do I know if I'm ready for a mate? How do I know that? Well, I'm going to run through some, some different things um, for us, again, as things that we hope will safeguard us or will inform us as it relates to um, how, um, where we will individually be ready to make a decision and a choice as, as it relates to whether or not this person could possibly be the best person for me could possibly be the best person for me. I'm saying folks that it's best we have some standard than, than we have no standard at all. So we're introducing some standard. We're not saying it is, it is a comprehensive list, but we're introducing some standard and we hope and trust that it will, um, you know, you can utilize them in, in relation to your choice in a mate. So the first one we're saying here, um, I know I'm ready for a mate if I'm not looking for fulfillment in or from you. <laughs> and I know that don't sound very, 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 very um, fulfilling at all. But what do you mean that by, by that I'm um, looking, don't want fulfillment in or from you? It is important that we develop what is called self-esteem. It is important that we develop spiritual discernment and in quotation, if I, want, if I can use that word, a life. Um, so that we won't find ourselves or um, making someone else responsible for our happiness or even responsible for our pain. And this is why, this is what I meant when I said we're not, not looking for fulfillment in or from you. It is very important that we understand the kind of ink that is in our pen, that we understand our own makeup, so we understand what we are bringing uh, to the table, so to speak. Um, what we are offering to this relationship, um, that I come, I come to give rather than I come to get. And, and that's an important ingredient, literally, folks. Too many times um, I've seen, you know, in, in my profession, where folks come, come in to see me, and the truth is they are unhappy because they are looking for fulfillment, not only from the relationship, but possibly even, even more importantly, from the other person and what they are seeking from that person that person might not have the the the, the required um um be it skill sets or, or or resources for that matter to, um, to, to full up um that person and so we are saying here um there are certain things that you must have as a foundation as a base um, before you even decide to take on someone and one of those things is who am I? Do you understand you? Do you understand your role? Do you understand why you even want this person into your life? Do you understand uh, what makes you tick? Or is it that the person, if the person says to you, um, what kind of person are you? You're, you're going to say to them, well, this is where you must find out on your own. <laughs> why are you saying that? Why can't you state what kind of person um, you, know, you are? And the possibility exists because you really you possibly don't know. And I'm saying here, it is very important that you um, develop a life, so to speak. Um, you know, self self esteem. You understand what makes you tick. Manipulation, control, jealousy, neediness, selfishness. These are not ingredients for a thriving and a healthy and a loving and a lasting relationship. And, I, and the reason why I introduce those things, it is because, folks, these are the go-to. These are the go-to things that happen once we do not have individual fulfillment. Let me, I, let me identify them again and write them down if you're able to. Manipulation, control, je um, jealousy, neediness, selfishness. These five things is almost like a default um, in, in, in folks who do not have their own fulfillment. They seem to always want to control not only the relationship, but control the other person. And once these things are not uh, forthcoming from the other person, then you feel like you're a victim in the relationship. 
and, and, and of such now do not, do not even know how to become victorious. Also, folks, a part of this fulfillment that we need to have um, in us and not seek it from you is the fact that sex, status, security, those three S's are not to be the only or even the main reason to want to be in a relationship. Get your fulfillment, folks, before you look for what? What are the three S? Sex, status, and security. Yes, friends and family, I know what I'm saying. These three S, folks, we come into the relationship and, uh, um, you know, if the person is going to let me feel better about myself, then you're not ready for a relationship. You're not ready for a relationship. You must feel better about yourself from the get-go. And don't ask for the validation about you. You don't ask person's permission for you to, to be better and to do better. To be better and to do better. That has to come from you. And if you need to get that fulfillment elsewhere before you decide to take on someone, then, then we are encouraging you to, 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 to seek after those things. But not sex, not status, or even security. And I understand security. Um, most folks, quite a number of folks, come into relationship for, the, for, one, for these three S's, by the way. And, and if, if any of these three things break down, then they feel that the relationship has failed. And, and I'm saying, folks, um, that is not part of being a fulfilled person. If you feel like I need these three S's for, um, to get that fulfillment or to have a harmonious relationship. I want to be in a relationship. Why? Because of what I can give and not necessarily what I can get. The initial stage of most relationships is based upon selfish motives. In other words, we come into the relationship as a result of what we can get from the relationship or from our partners, rather than we coming into the relationship to say, this is the package that I have. This is what I can offer to make the relationship a harmonious one. And so this is why being fulfilled um, is very, very critical so at least you don't come to get um, full up. <laughs> okay, how do I know if I'm ready for a mate? Well, I know if I'm ready for a mate because I have developed, which is a spin-off from, from the first, from the, from the one about fulfillment. I've developed my own character. I've literally de developed my own character. Um, and how do I know that, by the way? Well, let me give you some tips in, in you recognizing that that your actions and reactions are properly informed and, and you have developed, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Emotional intelligence and self-efficacy. Now, I don't have all those two things discussed in, in, in here. Maybe I should, but, but you have developed, what, what are the two things? Um, for you to know what kind of character you have, it is critical that you have developed what? Emotional intelligence and, and self-efficacy. Once you have developed those two things, then you understand that your response, or uh, um, yes, your response is, uh, is an informed one and as against um, operating out of how you feel. So how do I know that I've developed my own character? Well, let me give you some tips here. Number one, a person's, when you, you know you have character when a person's bad behavior does not dictate your response. How do I know I have character? When a person's what? Bad behavior does not dictate my response. In other words, if I am, I'm, I'm either an orange or a lime. <laughs> I'm not do, doing any political thing here, but I'm either an orange or a lime, literally. Um, meaning, um, and, and, and I'm not a sour orange, and, and I do not allow um, situations to turn me, um, or, or I become ugly because of situations. No irrespective of the situation, whenever I get squeezed, this is the, the image of God is what's going to come out of me. Since I've been created in the image of God, then even in my squeezing moments, moments that are quite unpleasant to me and for me, this is what my character produces, the image of God. That's how I know, by the way. That's how I know. As against folks where um, 
We don't even know how we're going to respond in any given situation. How so? How so? How, how is it that you don't even know how you're going to respond? And I'm saying, folks, it therefore means that, 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 that you're a puppet and a string. <laughs> if you don't even know how you're going to respond in any given situation. I am saying, you know you have your own character. That even if a situation that is unpleasant to you, or a person is unpleasant to you, you understand that, listen, um, I have made my choice and I'm prepared to back that choice. I'm prepared to do it over again because it is the right thing for me to do. I understand what is coming out of me, um, so to speak. I understand what is in me and I understand what is coming out of me. You see, I can, um, another tip that we can look at is the fact that I can look up to be and have a cross and become. That's how we know we have developed character. I can look up to be and at the cross and become. That has um, interfered too many times with the kind of success we have in our relationships or, or even in choosing someone. Why so? Because we allow, again, the bad behavior to dictate our response. Tit for tat. Tit for tat is killing our relationships. The, the, the you need to statement before I do, you know that statement, you need to before I do, that kind of mentality is definitely interfering and hurting our choices to have any kind of meaningful relationship. And so the truth is, we need to own our own reactions. That's how you know we have character. We need to own our own reactions and responses and stop blaming, stop shaming, stop criticizing, stop controlling, stop coercing, and stop withdrawing. How do I know I have developed character, folks? Because I'm able to own my own reactions. I am, um, what's that, what is inside of me is what is coming out of me, literally. So, so I am either lime or orange, or put it this way, or I'm created in the image of God. And so I am not going to say it's because of you why I am this way. No, 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 no. I'm taking responsibility for what comes out of me. Um, I oftentimes use this example. I say, if, 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 somebody, if somebody step on your toe and you, and, and you give them a curse word or you, a curse word comes from out of your mouth because they step on your toe. Did the stepping on your toe incident put the curse word in you or did it pull it out? Ah, wonderful answer. It pulled it out, which means it was already inside of us. So nobody put, don't, nobody make us behave a particular way. What comes out of us was already inside of us. And so write down the statement if you're able to remember it. Um, when we take responsibility for our inner world, again, take my time. When we take responsibility for our inner world, it increases the possibility when we take responsibility for our inner world, it increases the possibility that others will be able to hear us non-defensively. So people can hear us how? Non-defensively. Why? Because we take responsibility for our inner world. We take responsibility for what is coming out of us rather than shaming and blaming and criticizing and coercing and controlling and, 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 and withdrawing. We are not taking responsibility for our inner world, folks, if, if our go-to response is to shame, blame, control, coerce, uh, criticize, and withdraw. We're not taking responsibility for our inner world, if that is our go-to responses. I am saying that once we take responsibility for what comes out of me, then, um, then, then even if the situation um, um, should present, should present itself again I'm prepared to have the same response and why so because I have back that choice which which would then mean I have think conscientiously about not only my choices but also the outcome as it relates to my choices that is how we know we have character and unfortunately folks it's this is very critical and crucial before we decide to to to, to have anybody you know, or allow ourselves to get involved with anyone. Um, and even if we're involved with someone at present, um, it is important that we develop our own character, folks. 
rather than saying it's because of you, why, I'm, why I am this way. Okay, next. I know I'm ready um, for a mate. Uh, if I am prepared to read my book and stop concentrate or stop concentrating on turning your pages. Yeah, most of these statements, folks, are my statements. So if you're going to utilize them, let me invite you to please uh, attach the name Andre Allen Casey to it, please. Um, um, notwithstanding, I'm also trying to put a book together. So, so I know I'm ready for a mate. If what? If I am prepared to read my book and stop concentrating on turning your pages. And what do I mean by that? We spend so much time looking at what the other person is not doing to decide whether or not we should do. <laughs> so, this, so the statements, but you now, <laughs> you know that statement? But you now, but you now, um, that statement, you know, has interfered with, um, one, we having any kind of relationship, or even two, um, maintaining any kind of relationship. So one, in both having a relationship, and number two, in, in to maintain that relationship. So we're still keep, um, keeping um, the structure of our theme, uh, although we're talking about before I say I do. So I'm saying here, folks, that I know I'm ready if I'm not what prepared, if I am rather prepared to read my book, understand who am I, understand what drives me, understand um, um, why am I doing the right thing? Or is it that I have to, to, to respond to you? Should doing the right thing be, be determined by your actions, inactions, and reactions? Or, or, or is it that I'm a proper, proper um, sweet orange where, where no matter if I get squeezed, a sweet orange can come out of me? And so with all due respect, let us understand that we are nobody's um, 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 puppet. Yeah. And so um, it is I who must make my choice and not you telling me, even telling me what to do. I am prepared to read my book to understand me. It is important that we stop complaining about what you don't have or need to get and start to concentrate on what we need to give. You see, giving folks ought not to be a compromise. Uh, therefore, we should not give to get. Instead, we give to fulfill a need, um, not fulfilling a need, or not getting, I should put it this way, is not a prerequisite for giving. And why am I introducing this aspect? It is because, again, um, reading my book says I must prepare, be prepared to do the right thing. If I must come and give to you, you know, sometimes we, we withhold a part of ourselves and, and we don't um, show that, that nice part of ourselves to people sometimes because we're we are afraid of being taken for granted. You know, if somebody takes you for granted and you know, it, it doesn't make you gullible, you know, it, it makes them unkind. <laughs> you know, it makes them unkind. And so we ought to be stop concentrating on trying to turn other people pages or even to, to, to we oftentimes warn people about ourselves. So, so rather than making ourselves vulnerable, and, and, and I know you can, you, want, you can ask me a question about that, but rather than making ourselves vulnerable, and the vulnerability I'm speaking about here is the kindness. It, 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 is, it is every aspect of your sweetness. It is every aspect of the, of the image of God that is inside of you. Um, it is okay to make those part of you vulnerable and demonstrate it and show it. It is okay because that, that, that's what, so what people, so what people see is what they get. It is okay. And so, you know, and, you know, so I'm not saying we must at the same time, because I'm going to share some other stuff now that, that we must not safeguard ourselves from some, some other things too. But, but I'm just saying it's very important for us to, um, to, to be mindful of the fact that, that I am not going to concentrate on telling you what to do. I'm going to concentrate on what is inside of me and demonstrating it, um, um, demonstrating it and demonstrating it. Brother Smith, do you have anything you want to say to add? 
Oh, you're doing wonderfully well, sir. I, I, <laughs> but we have we have some questions um in the chat, but you know, as you say, you wanted to just go through first. Um, so yeah, I'll try and finish. I'm like I'm not going to complete everything. So what I will do, I will I will present. Um, like I said, give me how, how much time I have to present again? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> go, on, go ahead, go ahead. But I'm um, at some point in time, we need to. Um, right, I'm going to think that's not yeah. Okay, good. Okay. All righty. Um, so we're talking about um, uh, am I prepared to read my book and stop concentrating on turning your pages? You need to, you need to, you need to. You know, that, that is a statement that, that um, we have allowed to interfere with uh, the investigative process in uh, trying to have any kind of relationship with people. Hope I remember these things in a car. All of that is, these things are extemporaneous. Let me say it again. Oh, I don't even know if I can say it again. <laughs> but the, the right. So the term you need to. You know, sometimes we 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 say those those things. Um, so rather than allow the, allowing the person to to find out who is this person, or for you to to just to say this is who I am, um, we 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 put up a lot of blocks or, or a lot of fences, um, and and even facade. And, and you know and and say to folks um and wear that mask and say okay then i am not going to to show you what my heart condition i am going to i'm going to show you this this false person and 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 let me see how you navigate your way through this false person before you can get to the real person on the inside um and so we go to a lot of gymnastics some folks um and i understand um, the, the part and parcel to the re for the reason for so doing, but 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 the truth is, you're not only you're not the only one doing it. You know, the other person is also doing that. So who is presenting me to the relationship? Who is presenting me to the relationship when everybody is, is coming with their facade and their fences, you know, and their mask, you know, and asking the other person to act to, to see how they're going to respond to 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 to, to that false person. Our false persona um, before they say, okay, see, see, um, let me let me let me let down my guard now, so to speak. Um, if love is inside of you, know, folks, when it gets squeezed enough, you know, only love can come out, you know, not hit. If love is inside of you, just saying, just saying. Um, you know, there's a well known passage in the Bible, it says, um, I think it's Matthew 5 16, I think it says, let your light so shine before men. That they may see your what? Good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You mustn't be afraid to do the right thing. Matter of fact, the Bible also says, in, um, do good to those who despitefully use you and persecute and say all manner of evil against you falsely. So God has even, from the scriptures, I've even in, I mentioned to us that, listen, the Christian life and living is what we must portray. Come what me. Come what me. So who are you? <laughs> Right, or is it that you are concentrating too much on saying to the other person, Hey, hey, make sure you don't get me vexed enough because if you ever get me vexed enough, make certain you know, make certain you know. And so, we give so much ultimatums to the other person, um, that believe you, me, the only thing that they have to walk on eggshells just to have any kind of relationship with us. Say it again, Andre, they have to walk on eggshells just to have any kind of relationship. With us. But I understand what is what's what is at the heart here in a fear. The truth is we are we are afraid to be loving, kind, compassionate, and sympathetic because we feel like people will take advantage of those qualities. And if that is inside of you, I'm saying produce it. Produce it if that's inside of you. If you can only get orange juice from an orange when you squeeze it. You cannot get lime juice from an orange if you squeeze it. Only orange juice. Okay. We're going to give you some parameters. No, I already hear some of the questions. I don't see the question, but I suspect people are saying, yeah, but, but what if, what if, what if? Well, I tell you, if we operate with life and what if we wouldn't have any relationships because we'll be living in fear. But um, we're not going to jump ahead of the class because we have so many much more um, to share. Um, even about par being paranoid, yes, but that's possibly in part two, more than likely part two. Um, so, 
Uh, the next point that I would like to, to go to, how do I know when I'm ready for a mate? I know I'm ready for a mate when how I feel will not regulate what I must do. How I feel will not regulate what I must do. I think that's where I am. Um, yeah. So having the feeling, folks, does not mean that I have the license to. And I hope you already seen where uh, that, that each point um, is flowing into the other point. So having the feeling will not or should not regulate what I must do. It does not give me the license to. If I feel I must not drink water, it does not mean that I shouldn't. If I feel sensual towards someone other than my partner, it does not mean I should pursue them to satisfy my feelings. So that's what I mean by that. Here's a challenge though. Too many people make the mistake and say, I can't help myself is just the way I feel. I can't help myself is just the way I feel. We could spend a whole lot of time on this and so we will not. I was going to give you one statement. I want you to write it down. I'm going to give you one statement. Capture your feelings. Write this down. You might get tests after. Capture your feelings and don't let them captivate you. Capture your feelings and don't let them what? Captivate you. Or you can put it another way. Inform your feeling before you follow your feeling. Have a conversation with your feeling to find out if I must, if, re if reacting to this feeling is the appropriate response. Ah, if reacting to this feeling is the appropriate response. Have a conversation. So just because you see the person and the person look good and nice and, and everything and, you know, six pack and 10 pack and not one pack. <laughs> You know, um, I am saying, folks, um, have a conversation just because you have the feeling. And by the way, and that feeling, and, um, we don't end up um, rushing into things or, or making an uninformed um, um, decision and our choice. And after you, 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 you give in to the feeling, if, I don't know if you've ever noticed, so many times after we give in to the feeling, upon reflection, you know, we go, why? Why am I shouldn't? We have regrets. And that's all I'm saying here. Um, I don't care how you feel. Um, they are ensure that you have a conversation with your feeling first. Um, find out if you're able to, to deal with the consequences. Find out whether or not um, this is the kind of outcome um, um, you want. Is it going to be short term? Do you want a short term? Um, relationship or a long-term relationship you know so have that kind of conversation first and foremost and a very critical one too um, that, that you can utilize in informing your feeling is to, is to ask yourself to what end seriously to what end and, and because I'm a Christian you know I'm going to put in the God part into it too would God want me to do this and so to what end so all right then all right I'll do this but then to what end what is it going to do for me? Um, you know, what is it going to achieve for me? Uh, when I look back on, 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 on this event, am I going to feel, um, feel good about it? Am I going to feel proud? Am I prepared to do it again? <laughs> if I get caught, it's okay. <laughs> There's no clandestine relationship right here, if you understand what I'm saying. So all I'm saying here, folks, it is very important that we capture our feeling and don't let them captivate. Don't let them captivate us. So how I feel will not, um, I know I'm ready for a mate if how I feel will not regulate what I must do, what I must do. So here's the next one. Don't rush for quick attachment. Don't rush for what? For quick attachment. And uh, what, what is it that I'm, I, I mean by this? And again, take my time and say this one here. Um, which again is a spin-off from, from, the, from the last slide. Um, typically, in less than a few weeks of dating, you will hear that you are the love of the other person's life. Um, that 
that they want to be with you forever. And, uh, and even that they want to marry to you. <laughs> In just a few weeks, um, you might receive gifts. Um, definitely a variety of promises. Um, you'll be showered with uh, attention and nice gestures. Uh, folks, this is called the honeymoon phase, if you want to attach a name to it, by the way. And uh, this honeymoon phase is where um, your, your pursuer, you know, catch you and convince you that you are the best thing that ever happened to them. <laughs> and, and, and you feel good about that because you feel complimented. So they catch you, convince you, and you feel complimented. Watch the three C's. And as a result of that, believe you me, nobody can tell you anything. You're ready to walk down the aisle. <laughs> You're ready to introduce them to your parents and, and to your inner circle, so to speak. Okay? Don't watch, don't rush for quick attachment. Okay? Um, and even with this quick attachment, I'm going to say something now, which might not sound so good, but um, remember the three S's that, that we say um, occurs in, in, in relationships. Um, anybody want to mic up and tell me the three S? Just one person, quickly. Sex, status, and security. Sex. Status and security. Status and security. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you very much. And so this is sometimes when we rush into quick attachment, um, you know, one or two or all three of those things becomes quite vulnerable. And I hope you, you hear me read in, in between, you can read in between the lines. One, two, or all three of those become quite what? Vulnerable. Once we rush for quick attachment. And, and, and once those things, and, and I'm talking about from male to female and female to male, it doesn't matter now. Um, um, you know, as a result of that, somebody heart get broken, literally. And so, and, and feel disappointed and, and feel they were bamboozled and, and feel, you know, that, that, that um, um, they were lied to and, and, and you're a hypocrite and you're no good. And then they go on. And as a result of that, you know, the person feels victimized by the other person. Um, sometimes you might ask them, um, uh, you know, um, how long have you known the person? And they said, well, um, it's, about, it's about two weeks now. It's two weeks. I mean, two weeks. You know, I, I'm sometimes, I, I, sometimes I have folks, I have to be careful um, what I'm saying here. But sometimes I have folks, um, you know, um, say that they, they, they want to have a, 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 a committed, long-standing relationship and, 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 and date and everything has been set, you know, um, for whole matrimony. And, 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 it's not, and, and it's two weeks. Yes, you heard me, folks. Two weeks. Um, somebody say, yes, that is called love at first sight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me say some more about this thing. You may be so overwhelmed by this display of instant attraction, instant commitment, instant planning for the future, that you will miss the major point. What is that? It really don't make any sense. Why it doesn't make any sense? Because folks, yes, and I'm going to go there, I'm going to say this, because generally speaking, I use the word generally speaking, a different word came to my head, but I can use the word generally. Generally speaking, healthy individuals require a long process to, to develop a relationship because there's so much at stake. Healthy individuals, yes. You notice when I said earlier that, that before people come, notice the kind of mask that they wear because they're afraid of being taken advantage of. They're afraid of being vulnerable. Remember when I said that earlier? Yes. And I'm saying here that it's a generally speaking, that's the point I'm making. People are going to kind of come want to find out first. And that's why we have to be careful that we don't have any quick attachment. Now I understand 
while the other person, when other person is making all of these promises. I'm saying. Could you mic, put your mic down, please, or could you mute your mic? So, so, so I understand um, how is it that, that folks will, um, as far as the quick attachment is concerned, they are going to be coming, coming with all of the right. Sorry, could you, could you mute your mic, please? Thank you. So we're saying, as far as the quick attachment is concerned, um, you know, they are going to come, and, you know, trying to convince you that this is, that they are the right person for you and things like that. And all I'm saying here, nothing is wrong if you decide to take some time. Nothing is wrong. As a matter of fact, that is even recommended. Healthy individuals would wait um, for a reasonable amount of time um, um, to ensure that they get so notice the reason for the reason, reasonable amount of time. There, there is a reason for, for so doing or for so waiting to ensure that they get a lot of information or enough information before offering a commitment and not just three weeks. It is true that we can become inf infatuated with others quickly. One day, one minute, one hour. <laughs> but make sure that you do not make unrealistic promises and have the future planned after three dates. That's what I'm saying, folks. The, the rapid warm up is always a sign of shallow emotions, which later cause um, the person to detach from you as quickly as they committed. Especially now, especially if uh, you, are, you are delaying their request. Especially if you are delaying their request. If they are asking for the cookie and you're saying no, <laughs> <laughs> I need and, and need to put a ring on it as as one I think it's Beyonce um um did that song you know put a ring on it or whatever I don't even I hope I am interpreting the song the right way but anyways <laughs> I must take in, I must I must take in that 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 the lyric from the from that song um just to make my point though um and that is to say that um get enough information rather than before you know it um. You know they're planning for you to walk down the aisle okay so um so don't rush don't rush for quick attachment and let me let me know let me close with with uh, the this other slide um filter out the fluff and establish boundaries from early filter out the the, the fluff and establish boundaries from early and after i'm done with this then i will open the floor for, for comments or, or questions, preferably co um, questions, um, and let us see how best we can deal with those questions. So we are saying here, um, filter out the fluff, um, um, some do's and don'ts in dating folks, filter out the, the fluff and establish boundaries from early. Um, now, while there are some things while there are some things that we can do to ascertain compatibility, let me take my time and say this. While there are some things that we can do to ascertain what? Compatibility. The total filtering of the fluff is almost impossible. Flair, flamboyance, charisma, and charm. Two F, two Cs. <laughs> are oftentimes associated with the fluff, even if that was not the objective. Even if that was not the objective. I am saying these two Fs and two Cs are oftentimes associated with the fluff. And we are inviting our folks to filter out the fluff and establish boundaries from early. So what comes with the fluff? Flair, flamboyance, charisma, and charm. Um, they almost inadvertently comes with the fluff. We want, we want to share with you now some boundaries. Now, these boundaries are not foolproof. And, and why? Because if someone intended to deceive you, it does not mean you were gullible. Nevertheless, um, I do believe that these guidelines in an honest heart 
can be used to, to measure the genuine innate character uh, or character traits as against the, the flare and the fluff. What are, what are these boundaries? Somebody said, get to the boundaries quickly. Okay, we have nine. I'm going to, uh, I don't know if I can, I'm going to announce them. I'm going to share them. It would be nice if you could write them down. Um, you may not be able to write, write so fast. Um, but uh, let, 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 let's see, let's see how far we, we can go with these. Boundaries, here are the boundaries folks, early boundaries. Ask yourself, and by extension, folks, ask yourself, and by extension, folks, um, your prospective partner. These be questions. So be it yourself or your prospective partner. Um, will my partner be content? to wait without becoming angry when I fall below expectations he or she has set for me? So that's the question. Will my partner be what content to do what? To wait without becoming angry. Will my partner become impatient, you know, and complain and say, listen, um, I take too long now, you take too long for this man, and and and, and I take too long. I'm mean, no one to push my bag. <laughs> why are you being pressured to? What why are you being pressured to? Why do you feel you need to hurry up this thing? Why do you need why do do you think you have enough information to make an informed decision where your partner is concerned? You know, traditionally speaking, seriously, after three months, you know, literally, you know, sometime after three days. <laughs> but seriously, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. Um, anyway, between three days, three weeks, or three months, after three months, when you get married to somebody, you know, you're looking for a way out. <laughs> you start to scratch it and I say, oh, and start to have second thoughts. Not necessarily a way out, but I'm just saying you start to have second thoughts you know, because you're discovering some things about the person that you say, no, so I can't live with this. Or I'm never sign up for this. No, so, eh, eh. Them say, see me and come live with me are two different things. Okay? And so we start to, um, that now has become our new narrative. Um, after three days, three weeks, um, three months in a relationship. Whereas our narrative before is, I can't wait to get married to you. <laughs> my, you know, my, the love of my life. And we, and we use all of the grand statements um, to say that, listen, and even in our, in, in our vows, I will never leave you and never forsake you and never, never. And after about three, <laughs> three weeks, <laughs> we, we run gone to a pastor or to a best friend <laughs> to complain about our partner. Seriously, seriously, folks. So, before you decide to even make any kind of commitment to someone, ask the question. Um, you know, will, uh, am I content to wait without becoming angry? Is my partner content to wait without becoming angry? You know, whenever I fall, because the truth is, guess what happened? We, all of us are going to fall. We're going to fall below the expectations that, 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 that our partner have set for us. And so a partner is going to say, boy, I never expect that of you. Why you disappoint me? And I'm saying, why are they going to come down so hard on you? Say, boy, you really disappoint me. And then you feel so crushed. Can you imagine that? You feel so crushed in your relationship. Why? Because your partner is, your partner is, is harping on, on, on his or her disappointment. Rather than saying, hey, you know something? I'm, I'm sorry this happened, um, but you know something? Because the objective is to have harmony and not separation, then guess what happened? Let us learn from this experience and go forward in, in, in ensuring that the harmony is, is kept. If that is not the, 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 the words or the intent or, or, or even the, the, the intention of the relationship to go forward, 
then it means that the person is, is amazingly broken by the expectation and of such now feels, feels that they have the right, feels that they have the right to not only be angry, but to remain angry. And that is not a good, uh, that's not any kind of good ingredient for a, a, a good relationship. So that's the first thing, content. The next C word is cautious. And clearly I'm just going to run through these three um, 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 and then I'm going to stop to give you an, an opportunity to ask questions. But I do have more. I have content, cautious, control, um, relax, respect, refuse to reflect, rumor and gossip, potential in me and prayer for a second win. We won't get a chance to, to, to continue to, to, to share the rest of those boundaries. But don't worry, um, in two weeks time we'll be able to do so. And, uh, and not only that, um, we will be looking at the other um, slides that we have in our presentation. But let me just, co let me just complete um, my C's here. So I, I spoke about content. The next C here, I'm talking about establishing those boundaries now, is, is cautious. And cautious here now means, will, will my prospective partner be cautious in his or her judgment of me? You know, and honestly seek to be a healing rather than a hurting presence in my life. A healing rather than a what? A hurting presence in my life. You know, will my partner be cautious in, in their judgment um, towards me? And the next C is, will my prospective partner accept that he or she does not have to be in control of every situation and every, con and every conversation? Will they accept that? They don't have to be in control or even tell me what to say, when to say, and how to say. <laughs> tell me how to feel, when to feel, why I should feel, why I should not feel. <laughs> you know, if folks are starting to have a relationship and you find that, number one, some of these boundaries are being violated, there's no content to wait without becoming angry. Um, they're not cautious. Um, in their judgment towards you and uh, and and pr and prefer to be hurting as against healing and the, the third c is the fact that they want to control conversations and situations but they still want to control you if you find that in an effort to want to date somebody that somebody is violating at least these three boundaries, we have nine, we only have discussed three here now, um, then maybe you should say wait before you go. I hope and trust that today's presentation, um, you know, um, have informed you some and uh, you're prepared to utilize some of the information if you find them valuable. If not, you can share them with others or, um, you know, leave them right here. God bless. Thanks so much. No, you're not going anywhere. So, <laughs> some questions are some, yeah, let's just run through. Um, I have to go way back. Um, originally, there was a discussion about the generation gap. And there, were, there was a question about the warning signs or things to be mindful of with respect to the generational gap. So, that's the first um, area that we wanted to expand on. Okay. Okay, the, as far as the, the generation gap is concerned, what we find, it all depends on where you are when you're planning to get married. And what do I mean by that? You have some generation gap that is okay. It's not a bad gap. <laughs> Meaning, so if you're 40 and somebody is 50, that's not a bad gap. Especially um, uh, the... Um, if the female is 40 and the man is 50, not a bad gap. Um, what I find though, is that if the, if the, if the male is, uh, is, uh, is 40 and the female is 50, then we can have some, some challenges. And I'm talking in that particular age group. So, so different age groups have their, their, their own nuances and challenges as far as the generation gap is concerned. So, so and, and also as it, relates from, as it relates to male and female. So if the male is a particular age, um, 
let, let's say 40 and the female is 50. I am saying folks, we can have some kind of generation gap where that is concerned. Um, and, and I'm talking about um, um, what some of the things that might be happening to the man at, at that phase and stage of his life. Some of the things that might be happening to the woman at that, at that phase and stage of her life. Um, she would have already um, um, entered into, into, into menopause. Um, the man for our practical term purpose might be going through an early stage of woman of us. Um, no, you have, you have, not woman of us, sorry, I'm just trying to be funny. You have, I have, um, um, have menopause and andro, is it andropause? I don't remember the word now, but yeah. anyway, somebody can mic up and tell me what is the, the male version. Um, but seriously, um, so, so yes, it is andropause. Oh, so it's andropause. Thank you very much. Excellent. So, so, so you have, uh, as as far as those two things are concerned, if if he's going through that early phase and stage, then you might find that um, his desire might be for 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 younger persons. Um, I'm just saying, might be um, his interest in sex uh, with you might wane to an extent. Um, um, he may want to look to change his job if he's not having any type of job fulfillment. Um, um, as far as that is concerned, if, if his income, if he finds that he's not able to provide um, financially um, um, sufficiently for his family, um, again, these things can interfere with how connected he is with his, with his wife, um, um, especially because she might not at, at an older age and stage. Because of that older age and stage, then some of the things that isn't even affecting her physically can interfere with, with the nature of the relationship they once had when they were much younger. Um, and so I am just saying that the generation gap can be impacted um, depending on what age you are um, and, 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 and the different issues you might be going through um, in your relationship. If, if you are on the, at the lower end, and the lower end I'm talking about, the early, correction, the earlier end in your relationship. So let's say somebody is 35, well 35 and 45 is, 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 is not so bad, but let's say, let's get it even a little bit younger, um, 25. The female at 25 and the male at 35. That male at 35 um, a lot of times is, is, not, is, is looking to, to settle down, um, establish his own career, um, you know, have, have some, some foundation cemented for him to build and going forward um, with that is concerned. Um, maybe at age 25 for the female, remember if at age 25, the, 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 your brain is fully developed, especially in relation to taking on certain consequential decision-making process. If that is the case, then chances are, listen, um, um, you're, you're, rubbing, you're rubbing me of, of my early adulthood. <laughs> I still need to do me. <laughs> so there's, so, so yes, I'm married to you, but, 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 but I'm married to me first. So, so it's me, then us. And, 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 and there are some things that my friends are doing and there are some things that I also want for myself. There are some things that I want to explore. And so, yes, I'm, I may have married to you um, for security, but please um, also understand that, that, that there are other things that um, I would like to secure for myself that, that you are interfering with my having. So I hope that kind of lend some kind of, I try to do it um, from, from and, and I could spend the whole day here, literally, um, go, going from ages to ages and stages to stages, um, um, really. So I just gave you, hopefully, um, from, the, from one end where you will have, where, where you can have the trouble zones. So the trouble zones, um, I just gave you a while ago, is a 25 to 35, and possibly the, the 40, and, and the 50, from the 40, the 40 being the male, the 50 being the female, the 25 being the female, the 35 being the male. Okay, so I hope that um, helps. All right, the next set, um, I think, you know, different persons asked, but it really comes down to um, 
what kind of information, I think you, you mentioned some of them already, um, should they get before uh, making the commitment? But I think the, the, the big, bigger issue is how long? What is a reasonable amount of time before uh, um, they can take a decision to get married? I think that, that is okay. um, one, one of the big questions. We have some others. Um, but, okay. Well, well, well um, I have to be very careful here because uh, um, what I will say is that the primary objective in waiting is to get as much information so that your decision is properly informed. So, so let me answer it that way. What is true though, that, that, that um, but because reasonably, reasonably in, a, in, a, in a very reasonable way, or generally speaking, we are saying here that, that folks, um, um, too many times we have seen where people rush into things, um, they didn't get enough information, and that's why I said come, come three days, three weeks, three months, persons are complaining and say, I did not sign up for this because they are finding out things about this person that they did not know. This is why we're talking about establishing the boundaries. So we we'll only share some of these three things, the three C's in establishing the boundaries before we decide that, 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 um, that, that, that I have enough time or this or rather or that this is enough time. So I am equally adding here that not only on a time basis, but also the information that we are sharing here should um, be a catalyst um, for us to utilize in making the decision and don't just look at time. And you know, don't just say, okay, I, I've, I've, done, I've done one year or I've done 10 years, so it's time for me to go. But did you look at the other things or did you take into consideration the other things that I've shared? So don't just look at the time, but look at the other considerations that are being um, postulated. Okay. Um, Kifra had a... Um, Raise her hand a couple of times. So I'm going to invite her to mic up and share her question. Hello. Hello. Uh, firstly, I really, really appreciate the direction of the presentation uh, in terms of it being geared at the inward focus. You know, um, as a relationship coach myself, there's this program I do called Single Whole You. And it's exactly what it says. It supports clients with discovering who they are because a lot of times we don't know exactly. We think we're a certain way and we're not really um, just understanding who you are and, and stepping into that, stepping into your best self. So that's my, my first comment. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, we tend to look at what we want the other person to have um, going into a relationship, but not so much necessarily what I am bringing to the table. So thank you for that, sir. Okay. Um, the, the other thing was regarding the quick attachment um, thing. I, I understand and appreciate from a cautionary point of view what you said, but from my own experience, I don't think this should be an absolute. You already answered what, uh, the question regarding the reasonable amount of time. <laughs> you said some things um, that... I don't know that I agree with. For example, healthy individuals require a longer process to develop um, their relationships and rapid warm-up is a sign of shallow emotions. I think if two single whole people know who they are, know what they're looking for, and they come together, then who's to say, wait a year, wait two years, um, have a long engagement? If they know what their deal breakers are, what makes them happy and fulfilled, you know, and they're obviously aligned in values, views, etc., then I don't see a problem with that. Uh, my own example, we were married within nine months and that was longer than we had wanted to wait for. And we were discussing marriage after just a few weeks. So I think we should be cautious about making that an absolute understand from the perspective of being cautious, but if you both come together and you're mature adults and you know what you want, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know what signs you're both looking for, then that shouldn't necessarily, um, the, the waiting for however long shouldn't, you, you should adjust that knowing who you are. Thank you. 
Okay, um, okay. Oh, um, the question, sorry, those are two comments. The question wait, you spoke wait, about. Can I, can I respond to what you said though? Of course, absolutely. Well, I, 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 I prefer it not to be a back and forth between us really. So, um, so on one hand, you disagree and, and, and I'll just say, I, I stick by my statement. So go ahead. Of, with of course, of course. Um, in terms of fulfillment, I'm going into a relationship I am, I know who I am and I'm making sure that I am fulfilled by myself. How do I get fulfillment from my relationship? So you're going into a relationship? Yep. Right. I'm, I'm fulfilled as an individual when I go in, into that space, not demanding that from, from my partner, um, the way you described it, but my relationship should still fulfill me, correct? Correct. So um, how do, what are the ways that one goes about ensuring that the relationship is fulfilling? Okay, so you want to mic one, on? One second, um, uh, Andre. I will, I will. Sorry, one second, could you, Andre, um, could you add to that? I, I, there's a question here, as any advice for newlyweds? I think that that would help as well. It's along the same line. So those, the answer to that question would also help us who are newlyweds. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, that was another question. Okay. Right. Um, excellent. Thank you. The, I have a, 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 a concept that I developed. Um, sorry. So I have a concept that I developed. Um, I call it the, the, the three R's. Um, R1 says, what is, what is the results I'm looking for in and from my relationship? R2 R, R, well, that is really R3. Um, what, but, but you start with R3 and then, and then go to R1 and 2. So R3 says, what is the results I'm looking for? Do I want harmony in my relationship? Um, do I want fulfillment in my relationship? Um, you know, do I want a harmonious relationship? Right, so what is it that I, or do I want disunity and, 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 and pain? So what is it that I'm looking for in my relationship? with this person. So that's R3. But you start with R3 and then go to R1 and R2. R1 now says, I need to recognize the differences. And R2 now says, I must respect those differences. Now the truth be told, you could have mature from no till kingdom come. There are different persons who come from different backgrounds. Um, teeth and tongue is going to meet. And if you do not even know um, how to manage um, or, or even have certain, certain tools on how to manage yourselves in the relationship, and this is why I mentioned earlier you know, that you must have self-efficacy and, uh, and emotional intelligence. A lot of folks do not have those two things and, 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 as, and as much as they love each other, these are two tools that we develop in order to have effective communication with each other because our heart might be in the right place, but, but unfortunately, um, we still end up biting each other. So teeth and tongue is going to meet. Tongue can never bite teeth, but yet, why is it that whenever tongue gets bitten, tongue continues to function? You see, folks, tongue continues to function because tongue does not believe that teeth set out to bite it deliberately. Now, when you're in pain, you're not thinking that, hey, my partner did not bite me deliberately, especially if the biting process, especially if you were the victim of being bitten repeatedly, repeatedly. And so what I'm saying here is uh, even as far as uh, um, what kind of uh, um, things I can have to ensure the fulfillment is to have the best motive for the person in the relationship. So the motive for the person, have the best motive for the person in the relationship, be for myself, but probably even more importantly for the other person. Do I believe that when you, when I got hurt by what you said or what you did, that you set out to not only damage me, but, but to bring a separation and not a restoration of the relationship. 
So our motive is a critical thing we must, must ensure that we develop um, in ourselves. I agree that those who are getting bitten one time too many is saying, look here, man, um, he who feels it knows it. <laughs> so you can't tell me nothing. So I agree. And so, and, and, but can you imagine that person still is seen um, or, or, or is not looking at that instance or incident as a means to break the relationship or to destroy it? And I'm saying motive have a, is, goes a long way in, 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 in having good, harmonious and fulfilling relationship. So if you want the relationship to be, to be fulfilled, you must be prepared to have the right kind of motive um, towards your partner, even in the midst of feeling or getting hurt by your partner. So that is, I think is very, very critical. I went to, I'm going back to the, to the three R's now, because the three R's now says, I must have a goal. So while the goal is, whilst the goal is the kind of result that I'm looking for, R3, R1 and R2 says, R1 says I must respect, I must recognize the differences. Because that is similarities that, that make us go apart, you know. It is the differences that oftentimes causes problems in our relationships. So here's what we want to do. I invite folks to do, to investigate rather than inform. And unfortunately, most of our relationships begin with we informing the other person about who I am. So if you want the relationship, um, so the, the goal for the relationship is where each person is, 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 is prepared to do what? To investigate. What do I mean by investigate? And I'm talking about 70% of the time it must be, the investigative process must take, take place. The investigative process has what is called the AOL. What is the AOL? Where you ask questions, you observe behavior, and you listen with your heart to learn to do. All of those things, folks, takes time. All of those things takes time, okay? Where you have to, so what, what? Ask questions. There are things that I, that, that, that I, um, I mean, in, in short order, um, I'm quite the opposite of, 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 um, of Kifra there. Uh, it, it took me seven years before I get to married to my wife. <laughs> um, in short order, we'll be, we'll be celebrating 24 years. But guess what happened? We have gone through different, different processes, um, different experiences, different learning experiences. There are times in which I'm certain that she's scratching her head and saying, I never sign up for this. And well, I, I, I'm always signed up for this. <laughs> But that was a troublemaker, not her, right? And I'm saying here, though, you see, but yet um, her motive, or, or she believed in my motive, even, all, even in, in the midst of, 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 of the times that I may have caused, caused her pain. She believed in my motive. And that's what I'm saying. If you believe in the person's motive, you are not going to allow a bad behavior to dictate your response. But for you to learn some of these things, it don't come overnight. It's a learning process. But the motive has a lot to do with, with how far and how much you are prepared to put up with um, whatever challenges come, comes your way in your relationship. What do you want? I agree, you know, if I said to somebody, clap them hand, you know, almost automatically persons come like this almost automatically, okay? You never say clap your hand, I see somebody um, where, where one hand is on, is, is the left hand is at the extreme left and the right hand comes over and, and, and connects with it or vice versa. You really see, see folks do that. And when you say clap your hand, automatically, instinctively, both hands come and meet into the center. And that's what we hope and trust that relationships will look like, is where we clap our hands. But you know what happened, folks? The truth be told, um, there are times in which one person, for whatever reason, you might be the cause of their pain or not, that they are to the extreme left. And you have to go, go to their, to your extreme right. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. You, you have to go to, um, to go and meet them. You have to go almost all the way to go and meet them. Why? Because um, your motivation for wanting a, a fulfilling relationship. Your motivation is that I want this to work. 
I don't want, um, the, today the person might not feel good um, and I'm going to ensure that I do my part for us to connect. Tomorrow I'm at, I may not feel good and I'll hope that my partner will do um, her part to come over and connect with me. So I keep on going to, to the word motivation, but I'm also com coming back to the word about um, um, recognizing the differences. And that with recognizing the differences, we have to do the AOL. And the AOL must be done 70% of the time. What is that? Inform, the, um, investigate. What is the investigative process? That is where I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to, so whenever I ask questions, I'm not asking questions to use against my partner. I'm asking questions so that I can learn about my partner. In, in, um, invariably, especially at females, some men will level off, but females will fluctuate. And because females will fluctuate, um, the males have to learn to fluctuate too, <laughs> or to be flexible also. If you understand what I'm saying, and don't walk away and say, why, she miserable, if you understand what I'm saying. I'm saying, no, then you, when you ask questions, you get to understand the person's context, what drives them, um, what motivates them, what makes them tick, um, you know, what you must say, what you must not say, um, the, the, the rules of engagement. Um, that's what happens when you ask these questions to find out about, about your, your partner. And then you're going to observe behavior because you're not going to think about all the questions you need to ask. Some questions you need, you're not going to think about asking them maybe in the early phase and stage of your relationship. And maybe you should have, but you didn't because of your maturity or immaturity for that matter. But then later on into the relationship, um, you know, because of experience um, and, and some, some aspect of the relationship can only come with time. There are some aspects of the relationship that can only be experienced through time. We can't hurry it up, but it can only be done through time. Um, so I'm also saying here, so observe behavior and then listen with your heart to learn to do. Listen with your heart. You know, um, when the person says, this is what I want from you, this is what I expect of you and things like that, listen with your heart to learn to do. See, because it's not a competition you're into. You're not competing, you're not comparing, you're not controlling. You're not, these are not the ingredients for you to have any type of harmony and fulfillment in your relationship. You don't come, you don't come competing, comparing and control, you come complimenting. I hope at least these three examples, um, you know, shed some kind of light in uh, um, um, what kind of things I must look for to ensure that I have um, um, fulfillment in my relationship. Right. So as you know, we try to um, honor time. So we, we, we like to start on time and we like to close um, on time so people are aware. So we really have three minutes, um, but uh, really vibrant and dynamic group, large, large group. So I'm going to... Um, Ask for five minutes or ten minutes, let us say, so we go until ten past. Just, just because there are a couple of questions that are there, but definitely um, there is one of them that has to be dealt with in the next session. But because you were talking about the clapping, um, there was a question from someone who wanted to know what if you are the one that always having to be reached, reaching out to, to your partner to clap. Uh, can I, I can quickly answer that to know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We'll just do that and then we'll close it down. Okay. All right. Excellent. That one. <laughs> oh gosh. Maybe I should not want to answer it. All right. Let me answer. Let me try to answer it. But excellent. Excellent question. If you, you see, if you say to yourself that I'm not going to come over. If you tell yourself you're not going to come over then the objective of the relationship now changes because of your decision not to come over. Mm. Say it again, Andre. If you decide that you're not going to come over, then the objective of the relationship, the goal of the relationship, the fulfillment of the relationship is not achieved because you decide that you're, that you're, stopped, that you're tired of coming over. You have come over one time too many. 
Never forget this, folks. The goal of, the, of every relationship, the fulfillment of relationship, going kind of back to the, to the question that was asked, is connection. What is the goal? Connection. You connect emotionally, you connect spiritually, you connect physically. Connection is the goal of the relationship. And you must seek to make that connection every day, not some days. Not account of how you feel and not into the mood. You are going to, you have to set out to connect every day. If you respond to what you perceive as something ugly and mean from the other person, if you respond in like fashion, then a bad behavior has dictated your response. Think about it. A bad behavior has di dictated your response. Well, you now move, well, me now move either. And then where is the connection? You are disconnected. You don't have a connection. Not only that, who is going to teach the other person how to do the right thing? What, because if you don't allow your light to shine, and to do good to those who despitefully use and persecute you. If you don't use those biblical concepts and perspectives and principles to drive your behavior, then how you feel is going to interfere with what you do. So if you feel bad, you're going to behave bad. You insult me, me nah, me nah gonna further. Me nah, me nah, me nah. And so you give yourself enough reasons why you're not going to make the connection which now interferes with the goal, the primary goal of the relationship, connection. That's the fulfillment you want. And you connect, you know, you connect what? You connect emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Your ESP is very important to you. So you can write this down. I must see myself taking care of myself. Taking care of myself how? Emotionally, spiritually, and physically. My ESP. That is my primary responsibility to me. And then it matriculates into the relationship. Then it what? Matriculates into the relationship. But it must begin with you so that it can um, find its fulfillment in the relationship. So I say to you, if the person, if my wife is over here, let's say my wife is the 5%. Okay, and I'm going to keep that, that example. Let's say my wife does 5% and I do 95% and connect with her. Do you think my wife is over here complaining about me coming over to connect? Seriously. You think my wife is saying, why have you been over here? Where come connect with me for? No, a matter of fact, she's enthralled. She feels good. She feels loved. Why? Because she sees that I am making the sacrifice to make the relationship work. To bring about the fulfillment. What is the fulfillment? Connection. And I didn't allow what she did to, to dictate what I must do. What is the goal? I am going over to connect with her. Now watch this. I must not go over. And when I connect with her, I, I, I give her my resume. In other words, don't go over and, and, and then say to her, is so much sacrifice me I make? Is so much time to come and connect with you? Listen, sufficient for the days are the evil thereof. So what if I connected... Um, so what if I came over 95% um, um, for the past 20 years? So what if I did that? Is she, is she happy because of my decision and choice? Has the goal of the relationship achieved? If you want to go to France, there's what, only two ways you can get there? By air or by sea? If the plane ride did rough or the sea was rough, do you plan when you reach to France, take the next three weeks complaining about um, the journey? Or do you plan to bask 
in, in the fact that you're in France and you're going to make the best of it. I am saying to us, when we connect, let us not complain about who did what. Let us enjoy ourselves because the goal is achieved. The goal is achieved. Our problem, folks, is that we keep on complaining about the journey. And so even when we connect, we disconnect because we come complaining about what we did and what we wish we shouldn't do and how we do it too often. And so we speak from a position of feeling victimized, even although we have connected. So we need to change our mindset, I'm saying. I want to invite us to change our mindset. Remember, you know, that's how we talk about your own character, you know. This is why it's important to develop your own character. Because once you develop your own character, even if you're doing the right thing, if somebody's exploiting you, have you done the right thing? Have you done something? Has the image of God come out of you because you have made this choice and you're prepared to back that choice? So listen, I don't look at how much time I connect or what I have to do to connect. I am grateful that we have connected. Thank you very much. The presentation, Andre and uh, Brother Smith, thank you very much for the um, lovely presentation that um, was just shared. I'm sure that um, we will be meeting again September 19, Lord's willing, um, to continue the discussion. We have many questions that were asked during the session, and what we plan to do is um, look at these questions, we'll compile them together so that um, we're able to um, look at addressing them um, at our next session, which will be September 19th. That's the 19th of September. We'll meet the, the Navigating Life series is on the first and third Saturdays of the month. Um, and so we, the next session will be September 19th. And what, I, what we plan to do is that we'll look at these questions that were asked and look to um, answer them as we continue the other part two of the discussion that uh, Mr. Alan Casey will um, address. So please mark that in the calendar, September 19th. We will continue the discussion. Um, truly, we are grateful for the um, presentation. Um, very, very engaged and um, insightful details that were shared um, this evening. Um, so September 19th, please mark that at 6.30 Jamaica time. Um, if you're overseas, you will know how to do the adjustment in terms of your time calendars. And we'll meet at this very same link, um, same link, September 19th at 6.30 um, p.m.